Hi, it's Richard Moore from Racing Profits Guides and we're up here at James Gibbons Yard and we've just bumped into Freddie Tulitsky so we thought we'd have a chat with Freddie a bit about himself and also the courses he rides around the country. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the all-weather courses and then we'll go on to a couple of turf courses as well. All right, Freddie, how are you doing? Very well, thanks for having me. No, no problem at all. Uh, so let's talk a bit about your history, Freddie. What brought you into racing? Uh, I was born into it. My father was a multiple champion jockey in Germany. All right. So yeah. from a young age, I knew what the game was all about and how hard it can be and lifestyle wise. And uh, yeah, um, you know, from a young age, I knew I was going to be a jockey. So um, I always worked towards it. Yeah, yeah. And where did you uh, start your training? Started training in Ireland with mm -hmm. Dermot Weld. I right, spent yeah. three years there. I uh, served a couple of years of my apprenticeship with him, uh, but I also done my school at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, as you know, um, German is my, my first language, yeah, English yeah. was my second then. Okay, yeah. And I finished off my school in Ireland at St. Patrick's Community College. All right. Yeah. And I then went on to uh, Mr. Bulger yeah. and spent a further three years with him. Yeah, and then you, did you come over to this country after that then? I did indeed, yes, yeah, yeah. and uh, ever since I joined the UK, things have just developed nicely for me. I, I turned um, champion apprentice in 2009, Right. so okay. um, I was delighted with that. And were you with uh, Richard Fahey at the time? I was indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he provided me with a lot of winners, mm -hmm. and uh, I was riding for a lot of trainers and rode a 71 winners that year, so it, oh, it wow. was a great, Good great amount of winners. And you've only ever ridden the flat, have you, or have you done some jumps racing in your time? No, just on the flat. Just on the flat. And you obviously now you ride for a, a variety of trainers. Who are the, some of the trainers you ride for now? Yeah, um, I've got good tank contacts up north and down south mm -hmm. and uh, I do a lot of traveling um, you know I ride all over the country mm -hmm. uh, I've been kept very busy my agent Richard Hale does a great job for me yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm delighted with the way things are going for me this year yeah, yeah. and who are the main trainers that you'd ride for at the moment then uh, I ride a lot for John Jenkins and yeah. um, get a few rides of Clay Britton and that mm -hmm. and from there on you know I've got a variety of trainers I ride for so, yeah. so you, don't, you don't mind being freelance then and riding for a few people no, it's a, for me it's a good position to be in at the moment. Mm. Um, I'm available to everyone that wants me. And obviously to the trainers that provide me with the most winners, you know? Brilliant. <laughs> okay, Freddie, let's move on to Lingfield. Um, obviously the big difference with Lingfield to the other courses is the undulations there, isn't it? Yes, very true. Um, some horses don't really handle it going into the dip because mm. you're running downhill um, for you know quite some way, and then it's a sharp bend which turns into the home straight, and mm. it, it tends to swing you out wide. Mm -hmm. um, so some of them don't handle it, but the majority of horses does. Yeah, yeah. And what's the surface like there? Because they replaced that. Was that uh, the end of last year? It was September, October time, wasn't it last yeah, year? Yeah. Obviously, it was down for a long, long period of time, so it needed to be resurfaced. Mm. Um, towards the end of it, it. It, there was just lumps flying at you mm. and it just wasn't fair on the horses or riders anymore but mm. so it, it served its purpose but now that they've they've put on this new surface it, it it's, it's a great poly track again you know is it yeah a very light kickback now not uh, yeah there's there's hardly anything now you know mm -hmm. um it's very easy on the horse to be honest mm. um is it riding deep or is it bedded in quite nicely now it was riding deep obviously at the beginning but now it's it's starting to bed in more and more mm. so um I think it's a, it's a great all-weather track. My uh, strike rate around there is quite good. Is it? Yeah. I, 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 you I enjoy tend, it there? Yeah, I enjoy it there. Yeah. But um, I think any type of horse can go around it, really. And mm -hmm. um, There's always a good pace on, mm. no matter what trip you mm. run over. Yeah, yeah. And um, there isn't an awful lot of um, hard luck stories either, you know? No, no. So let's run through the trips then. So the five furlongs, a small spur, and then you come into the, that little straight, and then, as you say, drop down and swing nearly 90 degrees into the home straight. So are you looking for a decent draw position there? Is there any advantage to low draws there? Um, well, obviously, yes. You know, the lower the draw really over the five furlongs, the, the better. Mm. Um, but if you are drawn high and, and you still jump out quite positively, Positively, it's not the end of the world because you sort of you end up in the middle of the track, and and mm. that's usually the place where you want to be, anyways. One of the fastest areas, is it? Exactly, mm. it's the fastest area, and if you watch the big guys like the likes of Ryan Moore and Richard Hughes rides that track very well. He does, yeah. And um, you know, um, as well as as, as other jockeys, so, um, they to, they tend to be going three or four horse widths wide around the bend, anyways. Mm -hmm. And so when you swing in for home there, then you're you're 
you end up in the middle of the track and that's where you want to be and that's mm -hmm. where you want to make your challenge. And is it because such a sharp bend as well you can get a bit of trouble in running there if they're all backing up on that bend so going wider you're going to avoid that do you think? Yeah exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You, you are avoiding a bit of traffic problems every now and then. But it is mainly because it's the fastest strip of ground. It's the fastest strip, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the six furlong obviously round the bend a bit. Um, when you're coming out of the stalls there, it's downhill, is it, straight into that bend? or The six furlongs around it is fast and furious, really. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way of describing it. <laughs> um, horses that are drawn low, are, are, uh, they tend to go forward. Mm. Uh, if you're drawn high, then you haven't really get as much a chance yeah. to get a great position. Right, right. Um, yeah. And then it, it, it happens very quick around there. You're straight mm. into the bend. Mm. Um, mm. You're, going, you're running then up the fall straight. Uh, you're going downhill then and swinging for home again. Mm. So everything is happening very quick there for a horse. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not in a good position, it's very hard to recover. It's very it? hard to get into the race and find mm. your rhythm. Mm. You're mm. sort of always niggling then. Mm. Um, if you're not travelling mm. and you need a horse that travels around there really. Mm -hmm. So if you're pushing a horse along too early then you, you know your chance has gone, is that what you're thinking? You haven't got the rhythm going? Well uh, things just wouldn't work out for you. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say your chance has gone but it, it just wouldn't work for you. Some mm. horses uh, they like to do the work themselves mm -hmm. and if you, if you start niggling along on them too early on well then you're not going to finish you know. No, no. And what about the seven and the mile then? Are they uh pretty similar to the six or have you got a bit more time to get position? There's a bit more time to get a position. Uh, I think they're quite fair. Mm. Um, you know, seven furlongs is, is, is very simple around there, so is the mile. Mm. Um, Linkfield does suit front runners to be honest, mm. um, but um, not many of them win around there. No. Whatever is handy, again, sort of wins the race there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, I can't see any problems with a seven or a mile there. No, and the longer trips, uh, the two mile trip and the one mile, what, do they have a mo one mile four there as well? Uh, there's a one mile four there, yeah, mm. which is right at the bottom of the straight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're the type of stamina race. stamina test because it's not as flat or? You have to have a bit of stamina up your sleeve, definitely. Mm. Uh, races are run at a, at a decent pace there usually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously with, with your ups and downs a little bit, um, you, need, you have to have something up your sleeve. Mm, definitely. And uh, so what type of horse there? We've talked about the other courses. Uh, do you think galloping types at Lingfield or again, is it a mixture? It's a mixture, mm. um, but I think it's... it's the sprints, obviously, you need a very nippy type. You need a do. very nippy type in the sprints um, for, for, the, for the more staying races. Again, you know, you can win on horses that are galloping horses mm -hmm. and that, that do tend to stretch their legs a bit. Mm. Um, so a any type of horse really suits Lingfield, I would say. 